I'm sure if you asked most people if they knew what Wayside was, they'd at least be able to say the term sounds familiar to them. It started as a children's book series all the way back in 1978 and was written by Lewis Sacker, who also wrote the book Holes. Not sure how many of y'all out there know, but the Holes movie originated from the events of the book. With some details changed here and there, the various books tell individual stories about students' experiences at the wacky Wayside School, a school that was built sideways due to the contractor misreading the blueprints for the building. So instead of 30 classrooms on one floor, there were 30 floors with one classroom on each floor. The books were widely successful over the years, I think around selling around 6 million copies to date, which I think is pretty good for a children's book. I remember any time my elementary school threw a book fair, the Wayside books were some of the ones that went the quickest. Those and the Magic Treehouse books. These books sold so well, in fact, that in 2005, Wayside was given a 45-minute animated movie that aired on Nickelodeon in the United States and Teletoon in Canada. After that, Teletoon greenlit two seasons of a Wayside series in the same style of the movie with season one consisting of 14 episodes slash 7 episodes, and season 2 consisting of 12 slash 6 episodes. I was about 9 when the movie aired, and 12 when the episode series aired, and I thought they were pretty solid at first. I still think the movie holds up pretty well to this day, actually. But as time went on and I saw more episodes of the series, I noticed myself falling out of touch with the series more and more to the point where I didn't even care if it was going to be on when I got home from school anymore. It seems I wasn't the only one who felt this way, considering season 2 ended with less episodes than season 1, and on an episode that didn't feel like a conclusion was whatsoever. So what exactly happened that caused Wayside to go from a TV movie that starred freaking Michael Sarah to a series that concluded on a incredibly sour note? Before I get into the nitty gritty of Wayside, I've noticed for a good while that a vast majority of people who have watched my content over time aren't actually subscribed to my channel, so if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. It helps me out a ton and you'll be able to find my videos much easier than before. Thanks. Man, that theme song is so catchy. I still listen to that on its own. Although this video is mainly focused on the animated series, I figured I'd mention the books in some capacity first, mainly some of the differences between the books and the show. For instance, Marisha's personality in the books compared to the show is completely different. In the books, she was a fairly normal girl who loved ice cream and always hung out with a girl named Joy who never made an appearance in the cartoon series. And in the cartoon, she was a hardcore roller skater girl tomboy always trying to take things to the extreme. Granted, the Mrs. Gorf episode from the cartoon may have been a nod to her book personality since she actually acted super girly in the past. Todd was never specified as a transfer student in the books either, but rather just a new kid. Several characters in the books never made appearances in the show either, like Joy, who I mentioned earlier, Terrence, the school bully, Kathy, a girl who dislikes everybody, amongst others. And it's very clear the books withstood the test of time way better than the animated series. The most recent Wayside book released as of March 2020, with no say if that's going to be the last one or not, so. I always found them enjoyable back then, and clearly the new generation is enjoying them to a degree as well. As for the movie, I thought it was pretty well done to this day. It followed the story of main character Todd, just your normal boy starting his first day at Wayside trying to survive its wacky environment. Michael Sarah fit the role of Todd super well, his voice was very fitting. The way Wayside was explained to the audience combined with the character introductions felt very natural, you know, the mystery behind why Todd transferred to Wayside being fed to us bit by bit throughout the movie. Gags that played parts in the series were given origins thanks to the movie, making them not feel completely random when used in the series, like Principal Kidswater's tendency to call Todd by his home address 344 South Fairview, or how Marie Marisha developed her crush on Todd. I always wondered why her hair color and pronunciation of her name was changed from the movie to the series though. My guess for the hair was to make it contrast more with Todd since they basically had the same hair color in the movie. And the name thing never really made sense to me. I, I just say Mauricia instead of Mauricia since it rolls off the tongue better, but to each their own. Can't forget the introduction of my favorite character, Lewis, in animation form either. Fun fact, his design is based off of Lewis Sackard's appearance back in the 1970s. The book design looks even more like him, keeping the mustache and everything. <laughs> he acted as the maintenance man slash gym teacher slash slash Kidswater's right hand. Pretty much the Slinkman of Wayside, just less formal and less uptight. About a year and a half after the movie aired, the Wayside animated series began to air on Teletoon, then Nickelodeon later on that same year. Other than Marisha's slight design change and name pronunciation, the only other small change that occurred was Michael Sarah was no longer voicing Todd, being recast by Mark Rendell. And it was probably impossible to get Michael Sarah to be a regular on a series like this, so this change kind of made sense. The concepts for a lot of these episodes were incredibly creative for a while. You know, just about every episode felt unique. Like the episode Age of a 
aquarium where a literal aquarium filled up Mrs. Jewel's classroom for the kids to explore firsthand rather than taking a trip to an aquarium only being able to look at the fish through the glass. And some of Todd and Marisha's actions were really sweet. You know, when I was younger, I always hoped Todd would eventually return Marisha's feelings towards him, but of course that never happened, which now that I'm older makes total sense. You know, a show like that with no progressing story slash plot, let alone much continuity to begin with, would actually have an endgame couple in it. <laughs> but now as a grown man, I really couldn't care less. <laughs> Another creative premise I enjoyed was the Meet the Pets episode when the students brought in all their pets for show and tell and Todd has to watch them after telling everyone a story about how he lost his pet goldfish. The highlight of that episode was Myron's baby brother for sure. He was like literally eating the building. <laughs> A common theme that a lot of these episodes shared was Todd being a punching bag for a lot of these characters, though, not just Marisha. The main teacher for the Wayside students, Miss Jules, a kind but incredibly ditzy woman who seemed to have it out for Todd no matter what he did. And during a lot of these episodes, Todd would be sent home early on the kindergarten bus for some of the most ridiculous reasons ever. In that same aquarium episode, when he found his permission slip to save Miss Jules and the class, she sent him home early after finding out the slip wasn't signed, but... She, he saved her life. <laughs> when things like that happen to a main character over and over again, it does get a little bit old, especially if it's never really funny. I just felt bad for Todd and still do when I rewatched. It reminded me a lot of how Squidward is treated by random citizens in Bikini Bottom. He'll, he'll just be minding his own business sometimes and get royally fucked for no reason. But at least in Squidward's case, it wasn't happening all the time, and at times it was deserved. But for Todd, it was all the time, and almost never deserved. I think there was one exception in the Teacher's Pet Conference episode, which even then still painted Todd out to be the bad guy because it was quote-unquote his fault Mrs. Jules was sent away to teach at a private school. This episode also introduced her cartoon-exclusive father, who was supposed to show the audience where Miss Jules' wacky personality came from. I also don't think Myron should have been one of the main characters either, and if he was, he should have stayed closer to his book personality than whatever they turned him into for a wayside cartoon. He was tolerable in the movie, but as more episodes passed for the series, I grew to like him less and less. He thought he was some kind of genius super kid who deserved to be waited on hand and foot. Just came off as super bratty, selfish, and power hungry. A lot of students in general were given a lot less realistic personalities from the book to the series to make Wayside just feel more wacky, I guess. Like, Upside Down John being upside down literally all the time in the cartoon when in the books he just needed to hold the books upside down to read them. I think one of the biggest changes was giving Principal Kidswater a lot more involvement to the individual stories for the cartoon than the books. I don't think he even made his first appearance until the second book of Wayside, whereas in the cartoon Tune, he either has the plot completely revolved around him, or at the very least a subplot on the side of Todd and the gang's adventures. Kidswater wasn't a bad character per se. His childish personality slash lack of intelligence was decently funny at times, although not very original, it was decently funny. I just don't think he needed to be as involved as he was. Instead of incorporating more students from the books and giving them their own unique episodes, they just gave Kidswater a different subplot over and over. Although these subplots were never technically repetitive, it still felt repetitive in a sense because it was just him all the time. <laughs> Dana was decent. She she was the by the books, follow the rules type, which again, isn't a unique trope or anything, but I still found her fairly likable. She was usually the one trying to keep Myron in check when he was on some BS, so I like that. When it comes to Marisha, I didn't mind her how her personality changed from girly girl to tomboy, but the Todd abuse got kind of old. I know it was supposed to be a nod to the playground mindset where if a girl likes you, she'll act aggressive towards you, either physically, verbally, or both. And when I said Marisha and Todd's interactions don't really get old, I meant everything but the punching crap. You know, the episodes that shared the wholesome moments between them were some of my favorites. You know, like the episode Mad Hot when the two of them worked together in the dance competition to defeat the oi 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 dumbbells. Unfortunately, that wasn't how the majority of their interactions played out, which is unfortunate. Ow! 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 I get it! Ow! Miss Mush, the lunch lady, was pretty decent. I think she was the most tolerable of the faculty because she was probably the least dim-witted, so I, I didn't really mind her too much. But all of this, combined with the fact that this show had a very strange airtime, made it harder for me to enjoy the show as much. And, and by airtimes, I mean this show would always be in the middle of airing an episode when I got home from school during the weekdays. I was getting home before 3 o'clock, too. I don't know if I was one of few people to experience this, but I just found it odd how they would air new episodes of the show when most kids on both the East and West West Coast would still be in school. I guess high schoolers had a chance to see full episodes, but that wasn't really the target demographic. And it's also more ironic how Todd was always getting sent home early on the kindergarten bus, but we're getting sent home at time and can't finish an episode of Wayside. <laughs> I could be wrong, but part of me thinks the weird time slots may have played a factor in the show's short-lived time on TV. Now let's talk about season two. It was off to a not very surprising start. You know, episodes were still structured the same for the most part. Todd getting rolled, kids water subplots, with the Todd plot still having a unique premise at least. Then came the third episode where the 
show change to flash animation. Now, personally, I don't have much of an issue with flash because a lot of shows can make it work. You know, like Total Drama, for instance. From its beginning in Island to even now in Dramarama, that franchise has been using flash animation and still looks relatively good. Wayside, however, did not, and I feel like this change was the nail in the coffin for not only me, but many others as well. The hand-drawn animation Wayside used in particular wasn't anything super crazy to begin with, though Flash made it look just a lot worse. In general, the characters felt way less expressive than they did before, and that's not saying too much because they didn't have a whole lot of unique expressions to begin with, since a lot of shots slash faces were reused on multiple occasions. The colors looked a lot duller as well. You know, Wayside Season 1 backgrounds weren't anything too special, but at least the colors were vibrant. It felt like there was a sense of environment there, and that was just kind of dulled down in the second season. It just, everything felt more gray. I, I don't know, it was kind of hard to explain. The main thing critics gave Wayside backlash for was how much it differed from the book. I only provided some examples, that, but there were a lot more the cartoon didn't include, which definitely hurt the book lover's enjoyment of the cartoon. I did like the books, but was never super into them, so when watching it before it got canned, there was a lot of changes that flew over my head. Alice Wax, a blog critic, stated the cartoon just wasn't able to capture the same magics the books did, noting the books provided all these silly and wacky characters, and the viewers got no such development from the animation. I'm not sure how accurate this next piece is, since the article linked to the statement no longer exists, but apparently Louis Sackar himself wasn't much of a fan of the Wayside cartoon and only liked the animation style. I'm assuming he means before the Flash transition, <laughs> but I could be wrong. Once again, that quote doesn't have much weight to it since the article it was linked to doesn't exist anymore. If anyone out there is somehow able to find the article I'm referring to, let me know in the comments down below, but I figured I'd mention it regardless. It's quite a shame the show didn't get executed well enough because it really did have a lot of potential, especially if it stuck closer to the original source material. Instead, it came off as kind of lazy and mediocre. If this cartoon somehow in the future or in a different dimension got a reboot, I can only hope it sticks closer to the book's material. Make more use out of the other Wayside students that didn't make the original cut. There, there's so much to work with, I really don't get why the cartoon creators didn't make any use of it. I feel like if the books never existed, maybe more people would have enjoyed it so they wouldn't have to compare it to the books, but even then, it was nothing super spectacular to begin with. Just a casual fun watch until you actually learn what the characters are all about and how much worse they are from their book counterparts. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on the peculiar case of Wayside. Did you like the cartoon, dislike it, or were you indifferent? And for any avid Wayside book readers, do you believe the cartoon could have been better if it's a closer to the book's source material, or do you think it was fine as is? I'd love to know your thoughts. Of course, be sure to leave a like down below if you enjoyed this video, but for now, I will see you guys next time. Peace out, take care, bye-bye.